Hallelujah. Let us pray. Most dear and precious Father, we come before your divine presence here this morning. First, God, we just want to thank you. We thank you, God, for the move of your spirit. We thank you, God, for just granting us a visitation on this morning. Now, Heavenly Father, we just ask and pray that you would please now search us over. Lord God, if there's anything that is still lingering in this worship service that is hindering or blocking your people from worshiping and praising you, Heavenly Father, I pray this morning that you would please remove it in the mighty name of Jesus. Any sin. Lord God, anything, Lord, that is not like you. Lord, a spirit of confusion, remove it. Spirit of division, remove it. Heavenly Father, if it's just some things that may have been bothering individuals before they came today. Heavenly Father, we know, God, that your anointing will destroy yokes and loose burdens. Heavenly Father, as your people release those burdens into your hands, we pray, God, right now, that you would give them a release right now. Give them freedom right now, God. Heavenly Father, for we don't want your word to be hindered. But Heavenly Father, we want your word to take root in our hearts, Lord. Heavenly Father, that we may not only hear what your spirit is saying, but God, we would leave with zeal and a deeper desire in our hearts not only to be a hearer, but to be a doer. For Heavenly Father, we realize and we understand that it is the doers that makes the difference in this sin-sick world. Right now, Jesus, forgive us now. Cleanse us now from all unrighteousness. Heavenly Father, and as you cleanse us and forgive us, breathe on us now. Send a fresh wind in this house on this morning. Let your anointing fall in these consecrated walls, Lord. Heavenly Father, send forth that Shekinah that showed up in the day that Solomon built the first temple. Heavenly Father, send that same glory cloud in the service on today. Move now, God. Touch now, God. In the mighty name of Jesus. Now, precious Father, let this word go forth. That each and every one that is under the sound of my voice, Lord, would be edified. That we may be built up and strengthened on every leaning side. Speak, Jesus. Send Rhema now. Heavenly Father, as you speak today, and as you send this rhema word, Heavenly Father, help us to be able to apply all that we would learn on today. What is in the blessed name of our Lord, our Savior, Jesus the Christ. What is in his name we pray. Come on down and put your hands together. And give God a shout of praise in this place. Hallelujah. Glory. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah, praise
spirit in this place on today. I wonder if you feel God moving in this house. Hallelujah. I wonder if you feel God moving in this house. Oh, hallelujah. Zida said that you're going to come with a spirit of expectation. And when you come into the house of God expecting to receive something from God, to your blessings spiritually financially and physically but you know expectation is also a doorway for revelation because sometimes all we need is a revelation oh my god Some of us, all we need right now, we're going through some things that, that are confusing to us. We can't seem to wrap our minds around the situation that we're currently in. But God said that when you come with a spirit of expectation, he'll give you a revelation for the situation. Oh, hallelujah, somebody. Oh, hallelujah, somebody. And then you got to understand that sometimes God creates situations so that you can see, receive a revelation. Oh, hallelujah, somebody. Because through some revelations, you will receive growth. Oh, hallelujah, somebody. Oh, just look to the heavens and say, Lord, I need a revelation. I need a revelation, Lord. I, I need you to reveal some things to me right now in the state that I'm in. Oh, hallelujah. Oh, hallelujah. 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 Amen. That's not my, my message today, but I believe somebody is seeking a revelation from the Lord. Somebody is going through something right now and you've been praying about it and it just seems like you can't get an answer. And you're stuck at a crossroads and you don't know what direction to head in or you don't know where you should be doing or what you should be doing at this time. And God is about to give you a revelation in this house on today. Are you ready for your revelation? Are you ready for your revelation? Hallelujah! And revelation just simply means that God is about to reveal some things to you. In other words, he's about to bring some clarity to some things that you're going through. 
Are you ready for it? Yes. Are you ready for it? Come on, come on. If you're ready for it, say, Lord, I'm ready. Oh, hallelujah. 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 First, we give an honor to God the Father and our Lord and Savior, Christ Jesus. We thank God for the precious gift of the Holy Ghost. We do give honor to the chairman of our deacon's ministry in his absence, Deacon David Mutry, and also the deacons as a whole. We give honor to the mother of our church, Mother Hutchison, along with the deaconess ministry, and each and every one of the ministers that have graced the pulpit with me and those that are in the audience. We honor you on today. And to each and every one of you in your respective place, we honor each and every one of you. And for those that are watching us through social media, we honor you on this morning. And last but not least, amen. The stew in my chicken. The glaze on my donut. The cream in my coffee. Hallelujah, somebody. Oh, that lemon in that donut. Lord, have mercy. How many of y'all like lemon donuts? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. The best part of me. My beautiful wife, bone of my bone, flesh of my flesh, Lady Miller. Amen. <laughs> Hallelujah. There is a word in the house this morning. If you would turn with me to the letter Philemon, the letter to Brother Philemon. Ben. Philemon was just one chapter, matter of fact, it's just a letter that the Apostle Paul wrote to this brother and appealing to him or asking of him a favor. It was really not so much a favor, but it was a duty for Philemon to respond to Paul in this letter in a Christian manner, amen? It was a duty for him to do what Paul was asking him to do. Everybody got it? Philemon, Philemon. Uh, some folks might pronounce it Philemon, but it's actually pronounced Philemon. All right. Y'all with me? Yeah. And we're going to read verses 4 through 18. I'm going to be reading from the new translation this morning. I know I usually read from the King James, but I believe the new translation kind of break this letter down in somewhat simple terms so that you can understand what Paul is asking of this brother. Amen? Once again, Philemon verse 4 through 18. Verse 4 states, I always thank my God when I pray for you, Philemon, because I keep hearing about your faith in the Lord Jesus and your love for all of God's people. And I am praying that you will put into action the generosity that comes from your faith as you understand and experience all the good things we have in Christ. Paul went on to say, your love has given me much joy and comfort, my brother. 
For your kindness has often refreshed the hearts of God's people. In verse number eight, Paul says, that is why I am boldly asking a favor of you. I could demand it in the name of Christ because it is the right thing for you to do. But because of our love, I prefer simply to ask you. He then went on to say, consider this as a request from me, Paul, an old man, and now also a prisoner for the sake of Christ Jesus. He says, I appeal to you to show kindness to my child, Onesimus. He says, I became his father in the faith while here in prison. Onesimus hasn't been of much use to you in the past, but now he is very useful to both of us. Hallelujah. Paul went on to say in verse number 12, I am sending him back to you, and with him comes my own heart. He said, I wanted to keep him here with me while I am in these chains for preaching the good news and he would have helped me on your behalf. But I didn't want to do anything without your consent. I wanted you to help because you were willing, not because you were forced. He says, it seems you lost Onesimus for a little while so that you could have him back forever. He is no longer like a slave to you. He is more than a slave, for he is a beloved brother, especially to me. Now, he will mean much more to you, both as a man and as a brother in the Lord. Verse number 17, Paul says this. He says, so if you consider me your partner, he says, welcome him as you would welcome me. He said, if he has wronged you in any way or owes you anything, listen what Paul says, charge it to me. The word of God to the people of God. Oh, hallelujah. <clears throat> and I want to teach from a subject this morning Forgiving is a sign of growth. Forgiving is a sign of growth. Hallelujah, somebody. How many of you agree? How many of you agree with that? Hallelujah. And I do have a subtopic this morning, and you all know how I am. I, I like for everyone to uh, participate with the message. So if you would, please, just look at your neighbor and say, neighbor, neighbor. are you mature enough <laughs> to forgive? Uh-oh. Uh-oh. Uh oh <laughs> Can we say that one more time, one more time, if you would, just, 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 uh, just look at the person that is, uh, I'll tell you what, don't look at the person that is sitting adjacent to you. Turn around and look at the person behind you. And I want you to say, neighbor, are you mature enough? To forgive. Oh, hallelujah. Oh, hallelujah. See, if you can forgive, forgiving is a sign that you are truly growing. Oh, hallelujah, somebody. I want to give you a definition uh, for the word forgiveness. 
uh, according to the context of this message. Now, I want you to understand now, this is, this is a rough definition now. But prayerfully, at the end of this message, that all of us would be able to align ourselves with this definition. Listen now. Forgiveness is the intentional and voluntary process by which a victim undergoes a change in feelings and attitudes regarding an offense and lets go of negative emotions such as vengefulness with an increased ability, listen now, to hope and pray for all to be well with the one who offended them moving forward. Oh, hallelujah, somebody. What are you saying this morning with that definition, Pastor? In other words, if you truly forgive someone, you have dismissed any negative emotion or any vengefulness that you once had and now you're praying for this person that they would do well moving forward. So Pastor, that's rough right there now. So you mean, Pastor, if they, if they stepped on my shoe and they intentionally meant to step on my shoe? No, 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 not only did they step on my shoe, Pastor, but, 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 they, but they spit on me. Not, not, not only did they do that, but Pastor, they, they, they came into my house and they stole from me. And not only did they steal it from me, but they even had the audacity that after they stole from me, they came back and asked me to lend him. Some money. So pastor, you're telling me that in order for me to forgive them now, I have to really just release any negative emotions I have about what they did to me. And now I have to pray for them. That they would be blessed. And they still spending the hundred dollar that they stole from me. You telling me that I gotta forgive them. Well, Pastor, not only did they steal from me, but 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 they even came in my house and they they violated my home. So you mean to tell me that I I, in order for me to forgive them, I have to just let all of that go and pray that God would bless them after they had cursed me. Let's push your neighbor real gently. Say, neighbor. Are you mature enough to forgive? 
Oh, hallelujah. Listen, this morning, I would like for you all to look back over your life and even consider your present circumstance. Now, what is the worst anyone has ever wronged or hurt you? And I'm not asking whether or not you have ever been hurt. Because you know why? Because none of us lives in isolation. And listen, to be alive and to interact with other people, we are subject to being hurt. Oh, hallelujah, somebody. Am I right about it? Listen, it may be or may have been a parent or a guardian that hurt you. May have been a spouse or a boyfriend or a girlfriend, a brother or a sister, or just a close friend or a church member that wounded you deeply. And he or she may have taken advantage of you or perhaps has caused you some very deep wounds that you're not sure you can ever forgive them. In other words, every time you hear this person's name, when the name come up, you get all knotted up on the inside. And you know why this happens to you when their name comes up? It's simply because you have not yet forgiven those individuals. And then let me, let me help you know, you know, sometimes people can offend us and they are clueless to the fact that they did. I know some of you saying, Pastor, that ain't, they know it well. That's possible. But it is. Because everybody is not like you. Everybody is not as sensitive as you are. And so listen, when that happens, if somebody has offended you, the best thing that you can do is do what the Bible says do and go to that person, but go to them in love. And then once you have taken it to them in love, listen, if they don't accept, they said, well, I ain't done nothing to you. You better get out of my face. I want you to turn around and walk out of their presence. And once you walked out of their presence, you know what else I want you to do? I want you to forgive them for what they have done. Because when you don't forgive them, for what they have done. Listen what Jesus says. He says that if you don't forgive the offender, then your Father which is in heaven, when you go to him praying, he will not forgive. We in the word, we in the word, am I right? So you got to forgive them. You got to forgive them regardless if they uh, ask for it or not. You just have to forgive them. And listen, it's going to benefit you. Because you're the one that's walking around carrying this load. Oh, hallelujah, somebody. 
What are you saying, Pastor Miller? I want to just drop a little spiritual nugget on you, and I want you to really just think about what I'm about to tell you. Listen, the Lord says today, for those of you that are harboring unforgiveness, he says this. He says, it's time to heal the hurt you didn't deserve. You hear that? He said, it's time to heal the hurt you didn't deserve. Okay, you say, well, Pastor Miller, how can I heal that hurt? Well, listen, the only way that you can heal the hurt that you didn't deserve is that you must forgive. See, only you have the power to heal that hurt. The power is in your forgiveness. And once you forgive them, then what happens is that hurt then is healed. Because it's no longer now a burden that you have to walk around and carry. And understand what the Word of God says. Jesus says, vengeance belongeth unto him. And most people will say, well, Pastor Miller, you're saying all I got to do is forgive him and then Jesus is going to avenge me. I don't want that to be your motive to forgive. Because if that's your motive to forgive, then God... Is... Somebody will get it in a minute. I want your motive to be driven by love. Oh, hallelujah, somebody. In other words, we got to think more like Christ. Listen what Jesus did, and I'm going to get into text, but listen what Jesus did. Here it is. He's laying there on the cross. Didn't commit one sin at all. But we understand what he was doing because Isaiah told us that he would do this. Isaiah said that he would be wounded for our transgressions. He would be bruised for our iniquity. He said that the chastisement of our peace was upon him and with his stripes that we are healed. Now look at Jesus. He's on the cross. Stakes driven in his wrists. Stakes driven in his feet. And he slumped over there. And he's about to give up the ghost. But look what he does at this moment. He looks up towards heaven and he said, Father, forgive them of what they're doing. Why? Because they know not what they are doing. So when people sin against you, they don't know what they're really doing by doing what they're doing. So you have to have the same mind as Christ and say, Lord, forgive them. For they know not what they're doing. Because the Bible says, touch not my anointing and do my prophets no harm. And if they really and truly understood that, they would not violate you. You have to have the mentality to forgive. Am I right about it? Listen now. See, church, the ways we can be hurt, the number of times we can be hurt, and the depths of our hurt will vary. 
But most of the time, the fact is that we all get hurt by those who are closest to us. It don't bother us when someone outside or some stranger offends us. It don't bother us as much, but, 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 but when it's someone within your own house, when, it, when it's someone that, that, that you uh, really think a whole lot above, uh, when it's someone that has been close and dear to your heart, that's when it really begins to linger. And those are the things that are real hard for us to move past. But as we walk into this new season of supernatural growth, increase and expansion, God says, listen now, in order for you to grow, you got to learn how to forgive. You have to learn how to forgive. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Listen now, that is what I want to talk to you about today, forgiving. Listen, from this personal letter written from one Christian brother to another, making an appeal for forgiveness and restitution. See, church, listen, sometime... Uh, during Paul's ministry in Ephesus, he met this man named Philemon. And while we don't know how he made his living, Philemon was a wealthy slave owner who had been converted by the apostle Paul. He didn't live in Ephesus, but evidently he frequently visited the city and now had a church meeting in his home. Now Paul, on the other hand, had been away for some while and was now in prison in Rome. And during his time in prison, one of Philemon's slaves by the name of Onesimus ran away for some unknown reason. The Bible doesn't tell us why. Uh, now, he might have stolen something from Philemon, or perhaps he might have just wanted his freedom. And some scholars have even said and suggested that he was sent to Paul by Philemon, but had failed to return. But whatever the case may have been, Onesimus ended up in Rome in Paul's company and where he became a born-again believer in Jesus Christ. Now, I want you to understand this now. Onesimus, he served Paul for a while, but soon he became convicted of his need to return to his master Philemon and put his past life into order. And I believe that through uh, Onesimus, uh, just his uh, response to the conviction of the Holy Spirit, God is even sending a message to us through this letter. What are you saying, Pastor Miller? Well, I'm saying that some of you here today need to set some things in order from your past life before you can become an effective witness for Christ, and also before you can walk in this new season of supernatural growth, increase, and expansion. What are you saying, Pastor Miller? In other words, you got to get some things right. Some are walking around right now, and you're still harboring things in your heart against people in this building right now. Oh, hallelujah, somebody. 
I know I wasn't going to get much right there. But I know it's true because God told me. And sometimes what we try to do is we try to camouflage or cover up what we feel. But every once in a while, those things will expose themselves. Oh, hallelujah, somebody. And especially sometimes when when you have to work with this individual uh, with a project. And you're working with them with a project, but you, you, you're actually working with them with this project, but actually your mind is trying to find different errors that they are doing or mistakes that they are making with the project just to try to put the light on them and their flaws. And this is just your conniving way of getting revenge because of an offense they brought against you. Oh, look at somebody and say, it got to stop. It's got to stop. It got to stop. What are you trying to get across to us, Pastor Miller? What I'm saying to you is that you got to forgive. And to make matters even worse, sometimes you have a husband and a wife. And they're still battling with offenses. And you see it in their behavior. Because they have not found it in their heart yet to let go of the offense. Oh, hallelujah, somebody. And then, on the other hand, the Lord showed me something else. Some of you, the individuals that have offended you, they're dead. They're no longer even living, but because of what they did to you, you're still carrying it on your back. And then let me show you how conniving the enemy is. The enemy will even have you to take that grudge that you have on that deceased person and now you'll take that grudge against their family. Oh, I wonder if somebody's listening to me today. I know you might might not have been looking for this, but God is saying the only way that you can grow the way he wants you to grow is that you got to forgive. Some of you right now, you're in your second marriage, but you have not forgiven the first spouse that you had. And now, your current spouse, oh my God. He or she is being penalized for what this person did to you years ago. Oh, look at somebody and say, you got to let it go. 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 And that's the problem that we have in the house now. But listen now, Paul was writing this letter to Onesimus. Or he gave the letter to Onesimus to take back to Philemon. And he was trying to explain to Philemon, listen now, I know that Onesimus did something to you that really bothered you. In other words, he was really worthless to you because of him running away. But Paul said, listen now, he has truly been born again. And he is been convicted by what he did to you. So now 
I'm sending him to you with the letter. Letting you know that he is sorry for what he did. So he was asking Philemon to forgive him. And we understand and we know that Philemon forgave Onesimus. Why? Because we're reading the letter. Hallelujah, somebody. Oh, hallelujah, somebody. And not only that, but history records to say that Onesimus became the first bishop of the church in Ephesus. So we knew by history recording that, that he had to have been forgiven by Philemon. Am I right about it? So what are you trying to get across to us this morning, Pastor Miller? And listen, I do have some more to this message, but what I will do is I will bring a part two of this message on the first Sunday of next month. But I want to close with this. When you walk around with unforgiveness in your heart, as I stated at the beginning of the message, you're only hurting one person. And that one person is yourself. Because if you're walking around with that type of mentality and thinking about what this person has done to you, all it does is it builds up your stress level. And then when it comes to stress, how many of you know that stress causes all kind of chronic illnesses. And you'll mess around and here it is, you're walking around with hypertension and you're wondering why. It's because of harboring unforgiveness. And another thing that you have to understand, listen, you're going to always have offenders. You're going to always have enemies. You're going to always have people that will come and try to violate you or your space. But you have to understand that, listen, they're not upset with you personally. It has nothing to do with you. It's about the God that you serve. It's about the anointing that's on your life. And the enemy, he hates the anointing. Oh, hallelujah, somebody. In other words, when someone's hating on you, that's not your issue. That's their issue. In other words, you don't have an issue. They got the issue because they're hating on you. Now, what you got to do is don't let people live rent-free in your mind. Oh, hallelujah, somebody. Did y'all get that? Because sometimes that's what we do when we harbor unforgiveness. We're allowing them to live rent-free in our mind. In other words, you're not going to be living in my mind and then I got to pay for it. Oh, I wish I had a witness in the house. I wonder if I got somebody that understands what I'm saying. In other words, let the haters be haters. But you be a praiser. You be a blesser. You be one that always are falling on your knees and giving God praises through your prayer. Oh, hallelujah, somebody. And sometimes what you got to do is you got to pray that hate out of them. Oh, hallelujah. Don't tell me you can't do it. You can do it. You can pray that hell right on out of them. Oh, hallelujah. You know why I know you can do it? Because my mama prayed the hell out of me. Oh, hallelujah, somebody. Oh, I wish I had a witness in the house. My daddy prayed the hell out of me. I wonder if you're willing to pray the hell out your head. Oh, hallelujah, somebody. What are you saying, Pastor Miller? I'm telling you that you got to forgive. Don't walk around holding that thing. Some of us are holding grudges for 50 years. Family grudges. 
Sometimes the grudge started between the two siblings and now the children can't get together because of what the parents had against the other parent. And it's still going and it's still going. In other words, the enemy is the father of deceptions and lies and confusion. He wants to keep those things going and we got to learn how to forgive and move on. Oh, hallelujah. And those that are continuously hating on you, listen, let your haters be your elevators. Oh, hallelujah, somebody. There's two directions that an elevator can take you in. An elevator can either take you up or can bring you down. Oh, hallelujah, somebody. But when it comes to the haters, you let the haters be an elevator to take you up. Oh, hallelujah, somebody. Because when you lower yourself to their level, listen, you can't see your way up because you're too busy looking down. Change the direction of what you're looking. And when they come messing with you, take your focus off of them and begin to look up. Oh, hallelujah. And before you know it, your hater becomes your stepping stone. All they're gonna do is propel you to go a little higher. All they're gonna do is propel you to climb a little deeper. All they're gonna do is compel you to soar a little more. Oh my God, push your neighbor and tell your neighbor, say neighbor, it's time to forgive. What are you saying, Pastor Miller? Forgiveness uh, will give you wings. Uh, forgiveness will put running in your feet. Uh, forgiveness will put springs in your legs. Uh, forgiveness will give you the push that you need to grow. Push that neighbor for the last time. And say, neighbor, are you mature enough to forgive. Hallelujah. Give God a hand of praise. Hallelujah. I have a part two to that message. And I do. I am going to bring part two back the first Sunday of next month. But this is what I want you all to do, and I'm, I'm, I'm serious about this, please. God gave this message today because there is even some people right now that are going through sickness because of harboring unforgiveness. What I need you to do for me Please, and I'm saying for me, but it's for you. You might not want to confront the offender, the person that has offended you. But would you do this? Would you write a letter? Would you write a letter? And even if this person never apologized, I want you to write a letter to this individual. And I want you to tell them that you forgave them. Let them know that what they did to you, it hurt. And it was something that you've been carrying for a minute, but you have to now release it. Let them know that you were in church today and the Lord was speaking directly to you. And you no longer want to carry that burden of unforgiveness anymore. So you're writing this letter. 
letting them know that you have forgiven them. And if some of you, you might not want to write the letter, how many of you got cell phones? Everybody got cell phones? Now, I want you to be honest. How many of you got the number to the offender? Come on, come on, come on. Don't, 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 don't play with me now. You got their numbers. Before this day is over, send them a text. And tell them you forgive them. Listen, it's going to give you a release. Just let them know you forgive them. For what they did, you forgive them. It's over. You're now cleansing yourself. It could be a parent. Could be a brother. Could be a sister. Could be a friend. But I want you to do this for me. Because God says, this is the only way that you can walk into what he has ordained for us as a body. How many of you are going to do it? Get your release. Get your release. Don't let this message go forth and you not be obedient. Because God says that if you're not obedient to what he's sending through his messenger today, he says that you're going to be penalized for not doing it. It's time for you now to be healed from the hurt that you did not deserve. And only you have the power to bring that healing. You gotta forgive. Philemon, he forgave Onesimus. It took a lot, but he forgave him. And not only did he forgive him, but listen, the same church, the same church, check this out now. The same church that Philemon started in his house, Onesimus became the bishop. <laughs> Philemon used to be his owner, his overseer. But now in the realm of the church, Onesimus became the bishop, the overseer of the house of God. Yeah. That took a lot, but he forgave him. And that church was blessed. Oh, hallelujah, somebody. Send the letters. And by the first Sunday, when we come back in here, I want to see us all freed from the weight of unforgiveness. And can I give you a little secret? Pastor Miller going to be sending some texts too. Y'all hear that? Because there's some people, I got to forgive. There's some people that I got to let some things go. The message not only applies to you, but it applies to me first. I'm going to be sending some texts. Because I've been hurt. 
Lord knows I've been hurt. But I've came to the realization that in order for me to grow, and in order for me to be forgiven, I got to forgive. Oh, hallelujah, somebody. Come on and give God a praise. Hallelujah. We thank God on today for the word. Are you mature enough to forgive? The Lord told us today that forgiving is a sign of growth. There might be one today that have heard the word and you have not yet accepted Jesus as your Lord and Savior. You have not yet given your whole life to Jesus. In other words, you have yet to be born again. The Bible says in John 3 that except a man be born again, he cannot see the kingdom of God. Except a man be born of the water and of the spirit, he cannot enter into God's kingdom. He's waiting on you. He's been waiting on you all this time. Come now. You know the Lord is ministering to you. Come and give your life to Jesus. The devil has been dealing with you. The devil has been trying to oppress you, trying to get you to a point to where you won't give in to Christ. He's even been whispering in your ear, trying to get you to contemplate suicide telling you that there's no need for you to live. There's no need for you to exist. But God said he loves you. He cares for you. And he wants you. There might be one, though, that may be watching us live, social media, if you are and you want to be born again. If you would, please pray this simple and short prayer with me. Say, Lord, I am a sinner. Lord, Please forgive me, God, of all my sins. Now, God, I confess that Jesus is Lord. I believe that he died and you raised him from the dead. Therefore, I thank you now for saving me. Come on and put your blessed hands together. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. If you repeated that short and simple prayer after me on today, today, your name has been written in the Lamb's Book of Life. Today, you are born again. And if you're in need of a, a church family, a church home, if you would, please leave us a comment in the comment sections. And one of our social media administrators will reach out to you immediately following this service. Amen. We love you and God bless you. Thank you.